Just three months ago, this was an empty patch of land. Now, makeshift shelters built mainly from sticks and cloth stretch toward the horizon. They were shooting rockets and shelling. They killed people before our eyes and they launched a missile that destroyed our house. These refugees might have escaped war, but now they're starving. Severe malnutrition is rife and children are dying. I'm in the African nation of Chad, which borders Sudan, and here one of the world's biggest humanitarian crises is unfolding. Because over the last few months, hundreds of thousands of Sudanese refugees have fled here to this makeshift camp, escaping a bloody and violent conflict between their country's army and a paramilitary group. And these people have had their lives destroyed. Mum of two, Hadija, arrived here from Sudan. She escaped on foot after her husband was killed. This is your place? She's eight months pregnant and her children haven't eaten in days. We don't have any bedding, we don't have blankets and we don't have anything to eat. Fatima escaped a rocket hitting her house, but now she fears for her children's health. In our country, before this, we had everything we needed, all the food we needed. We didn't lack anything, but then the militia came and started killing, and we were forced to come here. The UN's World Food Program distributes rations once a month, but to feed all these refugees, they need about 20 million US dollars for each drop. They currently operate on a quarter of that. It means some won't even have one meal a day. They gave us some millet and some beans just a few kilograms. We finished them and we haven't received anything else. Sudan was plunged into chaos in April when fighting broke out between the army and a paramilitary group vying for power. The government says more than 3,000 people have been killed in the conflict, but activists and doctors say the real death toll is likely far higher. The escalating conflict has driven more than 4 million people from their homes. 340,000 of them are now in Chad. More than 80% of the people who live in this camp are women and children. The men in their lives are either killed, kidnapped or still missing. In fact, some of these children have lost both of their parents, so they're living here as orphans by themselves in these little shacks and they've got relative physical safety, but a dangerously uncertain future. At this nearby field hospital, the horrors of war are unavoidable. Refugees here face both mental and physical scars. 19-year-old Abdu was hit by rocket shrapnel. They amputated my two legs. This one was too badly injured down the leg and they had to amputate. And the second one, my toes were bad. I asked them to just cut two toes and leave some, but they couldn't be saved. Disease like cholera is also spreading. There are no toilets or showers. Even getting water to drink is a daily struggle. People line up before dawn with whatever they can find in the hope of collecting some of the precious liquid. These underwater reservoirs get filled up about twice a day, but there's only enough water that it runs out in four hours. It means that many of these people who've been waiting here for hours will simply miss out. In desperation, some try to find a water hole, but it's contaminated with animal faeces. 
Still, thousands of refugees arrive at the border crossing point every day. What you see is what I could grab from the bush. All I've managed to take is the kids. As hard as life will be here, they have no other choice. Alison Horn, ABC News in Ardre, Chad.